are the Board of Supervisors meeting for August 1st. And first thing we have is certification of closed meeting. Uh, do each of you certify that, to the best of your knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from the open meeting requirements of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered by the Board of Supervisors in the closed meeting? Roll call vote. Yes. Mr. Frazier? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Mr. Carney? Aye. And I also. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Tonight we have three public hearing items on the agenda. The first one will be the renewal of the Haskell Agricultural and Forestal District. Anyone wishing to speak during this public hearing, if you'll please come up to the mic, tell us your name and your district. Um, and uh, we will hear from the courtroom first and then move to Zoom if anybody's on Zoom that would like to speak. I, let me just open real quickly by stating that the Haskell Agricultural and Forestal District was first uh, created in 1985. Uh, over the years, it's been re uh, renewed. Uh, since that time for a maximum of 10 years each time. Uh, this agricultural and forestal district uh, basically is aligned with all the others in the county and places some restrictions on the land within that district which are enumerated in the packet and on the screen. Um, and each of the uh, citizens who are landowners who have property in this district were contacted to determine if they want to remain in the district and there were uh, advertisements placed to determine whether others might be interested. Uh, following that process, the Agriculture and Forestal District Advisory Committee reviewed the proposed ordinance, which is attached and provided with the information uh, that includes these requirements. They provided a recommendation onto the Planning Commission, uh, who held a public hearing, uh, who in turn provided a recommendation to the board that the board consider and approve the ordinance as provided. Uh, everything was advertised as necessary in accordance with the Code of Virginia, Section 15.2.14.27, and uh, all of this is in accordance with the Code of Virginia, 15.2.43.07. With that, it would be wonderful to hear from all the citizens here wanting to talk about agricultural and forestal districts. They have to. <laughs> <laughs> After all that. Anyone wishing to speak? Point of order, Madam Chairman, we had a comment go long at the 2 p.m. meeting. Are we going to impose a, a request for time limits this evening? On these particular items? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I don't know that we need to. Anyone disagree? Well, custom is three to five minutes. Correct. Anyone wishing to speak? Anyone on the Zoom world wishing to speak, please raise your Zoom hand with regards to the renewal of the Haskell Agriculture and Forestry District only. Not seeing any hands. I'm going to close the public hearing on this item and open it up to the board. Uh -oh. Madam Chair, being the board's representative on the uh, Ag and Forestry District Committee, uh, it was unanimous to uh, um, recommend this for approval by the board. And I believe the Planning Commission was after that, but our Planning Commission rep is out of town. So I would say that uh, I would place this in the motion for. Um, Dump the ordinance as provided? The ordinance as provided, yes, sir. That's a motion. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, roll call, please. Oh, roll call. Sorry. God. Mr. Frazier. Aye. Ms. Smith. Aye. Mr. Carney. Aye. And I also. Excellent. All right. Next one. Krebs or agriculture and forestry district? Uh, very similar to the last item. Uh, this, uh, the Krebs or agriculture and forestal district was created in 1981. has been renewed several times since that since then has the same restrictions as were, are, were discussed for Haskell and are, as are presented on the screen. Uh, this too was advertised uh, in accordance with the Code of Virginia section 15 to 1427 for public hearing, uh, was reviewed by the Forestal District Advisory Committee and the Planning Commission, both with recommendations to the board for approval of the ordinance as presented. Open the uh, public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak, please be recognized. Not seeing anyone in the courtroom. Anyone on Zoom world?
All right. Not seeing anybody on Zoom. I'm going to close the public hearing. And Mr. Frazier? Uh, same recommendation, Madam Chair. The uh, Ag and Forestry District recommended approval of this as well in the form as advertised. Is that a motion to approve the ordinance as presented? Yes. Well, it went so well the first time, I seconded it again. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I may throw a monkey wrench in at this time. Oh, <laughs> roll call vote. Miss Smith? Aye. Mr. Carney? Aye. Mr. Frazier? Aye. And I also. All right. Public hearing GAP TA draft report. Uh, I think most of the uh, People here with us tonight are here for this topic. Um, the uh, Office of Intermodal Investment and Planning um, had a grant opportunity that was um, shared with the board uh, several meetings ago. Uh, the board elected to move forward with an application to receive that uh, funding, so to say, uh, for a study to look at the pedestrian or multimodal uh, transportation opportunities in Flint Hill and Sperryville. Uh, no funding passed through the county. It was the state consultant that was selected by the state and then assigned to this project. Uh, the county then worked through scoping with that uh, consultant and the state. Um, part of that scope did not allow the consultant to perform any public outreach. I'm not sure why they set the projects up that way. A public outreach is completely left to uh, the county if you want to have some. Uh, this is not a required public hearing, but it seemed like it was, would generate a lot of public interest, and therefore it seemed appropriate to have a public hearing as you are tonight. Um, attached to this agenda item are two different versions of a report that were prepared by Tool Design, the, the consultant to the state. Uh, the one version dated July 15th, and then a second version dated July 28th. That July 28th version incorporates... Uh, feedback that was received from OIPI and the um, uh, VDOT representatives. And I've also attached a highlighted changes version that was provided to me by the consultant, although it does not attract changes. Um, I'm not sure how the board would like to go through this document. I can pull it up on the screen and we can scroll through it section by section. Um, if you've already reviewed it in detail yourselves, I'm rather confident that the citizens have reviewed it in detail. Um, you can receive uh, citizen input and then perhaps focus in on different sections. Uh, whatever the board's pleasure, there is no formalities on how you do this because it's not a requirement. Whatever works best for your process. Ms. Smith, given that I believe the majority of the people in the room are from your district, what would you like to see? Well, I, I have to say I'm sort of at a loss because we received a document early that was sort of published and talked about, um, and then we received this other document on Friday, which contains a lot more information and a lot of changes. And I think we both referenced this in the, in the article that we were asked to comment in for the Rappahannock News that... Um, that while the study is, is always interesting to see another perspective, what we really needed was input from VDOT um, about what may or may not all be involved in executing. Um, and so I think, I don't know if the public has looked at that. You know, there hasn't been a paper published since last Friday. So I think a lot of folks may not have heard about that. Um, you wanna do a quick um, review? I mean, it's a lot of detail changes, and so, I mean, I think tonight we should really concentrate on hearing from the public, but I do think it is problematic that there was no public outreach component, and we will have to be exhaustive in our public outreach, um, and it's going to be, you know, a, a, something that we'll need to, to work through diligently. Um, to see really what people want. Yeah. The state originally wanted this project to end on, I think, July 6th. And I said, that, that won't do. Uh, we need to at least have time for the community and the board to review the draft document and provide feedback, which uh, provided us this extra month or so through 
early August when uh, the consultant's work will be done. It doesn't mean that we won't have whatever they produce and be able to build on it ourselves in the future, uh, but that's what the state has funded. And for good or bad, that's the process that they provided to us. And, and I just know that I've had people even reaching out to me today, you know, wondering what's going on and why there's a change document and, um, you know, asking me what's the basis for the discussion. And it's a lot to track. But I, I know that there's a lot of people that have come out tonight and uh, want to speak on it. And so I, I think we should we should use it as a hearing. It's should, we should be listening okay. and, and deciding um, a diligent way forward after much prayerful consideration. All right, I'm good with that. If everybody else is, we'll open the public hearing for the GAPTA draft report. Anyone wishing to speak, please be recognized. What's your name and district when you come up to the mic? Yes, sir. Scott, Mc Scott McBride, Piedmont District. Um, I just heard about this thing this morning. <laughs> Pretty sudden. Uh, you want to bring this up on the screen? Page six of a. So while they're looking for that, it's really only one detail that I object to. I, I'm all for the idea of traffic calming. I think that's great. I would love to have a sidewalk uh, going from the church down to the center of town. That's a very dangerous situation, especially when they had that Sperry Fest thing. I mean, people were just walking in the road. I mean, traffic couldn't even get by. So uh, that would be good. Uh, we're going to need you to speak into the mic or people won't hear you. Uh, okay. Sorry. All right. Well, that's my house on the corner there, and, uh, and they show a parking area up along the edge of the uh, lane to the sewer plant. And uh, it seems unnecessary to me uh, because on the other side of that lane, the land is level, but on the our side, it's, it's cut like a ditch, and it, it actually, it's cut like that all the way down to the river, and it drains water. You know? And I don't know how Cliff feels about people parking on the other side of the lane between the lane and the fence, but, I mean, they, during that very fast thing, people just pulled in on Cliff property and parked in there. It really wasn't a problem, because they were only there for a day. Um, but, uh, well, that, that would be my only objection. I don't know if they, they're in an artscape there or, or what that is. Or. Yeah. I don't know how the board wants to handle that. I think this is one of the situations where we probably should answer people's questions if we could. Yeah. Um, I would just say this is a very high level conceptual work, mm -hmm. and um, the consultant has identified that area for parking. There's no concept of whether it would be hard surface or what the material would be. And quite frankly, if parking on the other side of the easement back to the water sewer plant made more sense, then that might happen. There's a lot of design that would happen between now and then and uh, would be based off of feedback like is being received right now. Right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Jump in the back. Hi, good evening. Yurka Taylor, Piedmont District as well. Oh, I'm sorry, could you say that again? Yurka Taylor, um, Piedmont District as well. Uh, just wanted to say, uh, we've come here, my wife and I, to express strong support for the conceptual uh, idea of of um, traffic calming and offering more pedestrian facilities. Our property is uh, right off Atkins Road, so we're very much interested in um, having a uh, having a sidewalk going to, going to the village. One of the um, um, things that attracted us to um, to that location where we uh, where we have our house is precisely the proximity to the village and the ability to 
um, enjoy enjoy the village and enjoy 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 the area without the need to to use automobile without the need to it's it's essentially another another way to take another car off the road it's uh, and we're hoping that other residents would be uh, in a similar situation and would definitely appreciate something that would allow us to uh, do so and continue doing so in a in a more in a more and safer manner so again just wanted to reiterate great support for the conceptual idea without going into details thank you thank you Yes, sir. Uh, Bob Trafton, Piedmont District. I also want to voice my support for the for this plan or a plan, not necessarily this plan. I like a lot of aspects of this: the sidewalks, the pedestrian access, the traffic calming, some of those aspects. I, I do walk downtown Sperryville frequently. And I find the sidewalks a bit narrow. I often step off the sidewalk whenever a vehicle is coming because a, a truck with a wide mirror could easily hit you because it's very close. And I also walk up to, say, B&B, &B, Napa Auto Parts occasionally and just walking through the grass. So a sidewalk in that area would be very beneficial to myself. So Thank you. I'm in support. Uh, my name is Rick Lassard. I'm a Piedmont uh, district resident, and my wife and I wrote a, a note today to the board in support, in general support of this plan. We understand there's devils in the details. I actually have the old report, not the 28th, which talked about more specifics. But at the same time, I do think it's a, it's a great idea. It would enhance Sperryville and Flint Hill. I think we should put a stop sign right in front of your restaurant. That would, that, would, that, that, would, that would slow the traffic down even more. Maybe a three-way stop. Yep. Um, but, uh, and I do like the other things in the plant. I agree with uh, on the wastewater plant road. I was on the sewer board, as you, as you know, for eight years. And, and he, Mr. McBride is correct that it is a ditch between the, road, the existing road and his property. So what they're planning is not really going to be feasible. Plus, the way it looks is you would have to actually go all the way down the end of the sewer road, turn around to actually park on that side if you were going to parallel park. Uh, I like the idea of, a, uh, of the trail, one of the trailheads starting there and being able to, be, to get there from downtown Sperryville, as the case may be, along a sidewalk that's existing. Uh, so I hope that, that you all will support this just like you supported the last two issues that came up unanimously to, <laughs> to go forward. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Thorny Van Acker from uh, Stonewall Hawthorne. Uh, I don't live in Spurryville, but I, am a, I do work and help with the Spurryville Trail uh, Committee and I enjoy walking the trails and uh, enjoying Spurryville with my grandchildren when they come to town. Uh, I fully support the, uh, the idea of the uh, study that was put, put out, and thank you very much, Christine, for getting that thing launched. I think that there's, it has a lot of value in providing good ideas for the, the future uh, pedestrian-friendly nature of Spurryville, which I, I think is something we should strive for. It's already started with trail network that's in place, and this would just facilitate it. Uh, I did submit my comments to Gary Curry on the on the 28th document as well as the 15th document, and there are some subtle changes. One of which is they soften their stance on the full stop, the three-way stop at the corner store, which I would prefer to see remain as a full three-way stop uh, because I've had some. Uh, challenges navigating that corner myself, and I think other traffic calming issues that they uh, solutions that they propose may encroach on property uh, at that intersection that is not necessary. Uh, some of the other things that I, I noticed in the study they they show two crosswalks near Shaw's Garage, one crossing 211 and one crossing uh, 522. I think that could be simplified by one simple crossing further east on 211, going straight to the a grassy area by the headmaster's pub and rejoining the trail that already exists. And I, I made that kind of proposal. Uh, let's see, what else did I mention? Oh, the parking that uh, the gentleman, the first gentleman pointed out. I don't think there's really any need for having parking at that spot. It's, people can walk. It's meant to be a pedestrian trail on a sidewalk, and people can park elsewhere, and they don't need to park at the trailhead. So that, that can be just deleted from scope. 
Uh, there is a, a reference to the trail or the side or trail going all the way up to the Miller property entrance, and I think the, the way they describe that incorrectly, it really goes to the uh, to the uh, the, the sewer WSA, The WSA eat road is an easement on the Miller property. Okay. Well, I, think so clear, I guess that's the confusion. It would be clearer if it just said the sewer access road. Yeah, right. probably. And the other the comment I have is uh, they, they're proposing to redo the intersection of 211 and Water Street and maybe redo the bridge and make that a T connection as opposed to a, an angled uh, connection as it is now. Main Street. Main Street. That's Main Street. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'll learn the town yet. Uh, they're they're make, making a mention of not turn, making a left turn from that road, and I think that would be mighty inconvenient for people and uh, really an unnecessary restriction. There should be enough visibility to allow left-hand turns if it was a T connection. That's all my comments. I just fully support this thing going forward. Uh, take the comments, improve the draft. It will be a good planning document for, for the community as we go forward. I did pass your documents both onto the board. Thank you. Tony. Thank you. I'm Barbara Dolphy. I don't have a speech plan, but I just want to tell you that as a member of this community, the efforts that the Sparrowville Alliance has put into making our community more accessible to everybody has been wonderful. Um, I sit on my front porch right there on Water Street, and the people going up and down that trail, grandparents with their grandkids, kid people with their dogs. I can always tell when Tank, the dog from Gordon and Susan, is in the water because he makes the most noise. Um, it's so wonderful to see people really active in the community and having a place to go that's so peaceful. And get to meet a lot of our neighbors in a more um, peaceful way. Uh, I know this for the, has, there are a lot of issues and points to be worked out, but the concept of it I fully believe in. Because what we are is a community. Not that we don't have the same ideas, we have a few different ideas, but the community is people who want to live together, get along together, communicate with each other, Maybe you want to see me, maybe you don't, but I'm here, and I'll be here as long as I can. So I support this because it builds community, builds relationships, sense of belonging. You know, the older you get, I'm two weeks away from turning 80, the older you get, the more you need people, and it's so nice to have people walking. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. <coughs> Hi, Carrie Sutton in Piedmont District. Uh, first, I want to thank you for doing the study. Many of you know I'm a big fan of study, getting data and understanding what the shortfalls were and getting experts to tell us that. Um, so I think that's important. I 100% agree with Christine that we need community input. That's an important part of anything that you do in a community. So I encourage that, that step once we uh, get beyond the final report. Um, on the theme of studies, many of you know that we actually conducted, the Alliance conducted a study of uh, Sperryville in 2020. Um, uh, we interviewed, we got survey responses to 220 people, 221 people, asking them a number of questions. One of those questions was, what were the amenities they most wanted in Sperryville? The number one um, priority or amenity that people wanted were sidewalks, speed calming, traffic calming, and streetscape. So there is, there is a little bit of research that suggests that the community wants these activities, or they want sidewalks. They want it to be a friendlier city. Um, we followed up that survey with a number of focus groups. They were fascinating focus groups. We had about 80 people through six different focus groups. We had a group of seniors. We had a group of kids. We had a group of families, business leaders. Um, generally, the major theme you heard from them was they wanted Sperryville to be a community, have a sense of community. Um, the ability to get around and walk around. One of the most fascinating one of the, one of the sessions was um, held at um, Kathy and Fred Eggers' house on Thornton Gap Church Road. It was the first one we did, and it was the most fascinating because we had a lot of seniors there. In fact, my good friend Carolyn was there with us. Um, Margaret Ann Whalen was there. Um, Lillian Ayler, uh, Charlotte Jenkins, and we, Eileen Johnson, Johnson was there. Fascinating discussion. We did it in their front yard because COVID was in, and we had a beautiful view while we were doing it. But one of the things, they, one of the many topics they talked about was that kind of loss of a sense of community. 
And let me just read to you a couple of things that they actually said during that meeting. Um, a number of these folks spoke fondly of their years in Sperryville. They said, in their early years, everybody knew each other, and going to the commercial portion of Sperryville was a fun experience with the multiple grocery stores and service stations. They said, walking about in Sperryville elicited a lot of waves, particularly from long-standing residents, homeowners, and homeowners from the front porch. They then decried the fact that the waves don't come as often as they used to. They were unanimous. They, there was unanimous concern from, for pedestrian safety, traffic, and speeding, with several mentioning that their walks in, in the community now were a lot scarier than they used to be. Um, that's where this study becomes really important. I will tell you, this study is not so much about sidewalks and it's calling for sidewalks and crosswalks and things, but this study really is about making Sperryville a community again. It's about getting people out on the road, on the sidewalk, saying hi to one another again. Um, it is not an economic development tool. It's not about bringing tourists here. In fact, the purpose of this document is actually to slow truckers and traffic slow truckers and tourists down in Sperryville and let us gain control of our streets again. So I wholeheartedly support most of these recommendations. I've sent you all a letter describing where I supported things, where I had some concerns, such as the Main Street entrance. Um, but the point of this is actually to allow Jen Cable to run up and down 211 like she does on a regular basis, or me to walk down to Johnny Jenkins and buy tomatoes rather than having to drive down. Um, Nino and Kirchman, who works for me, I saw her walking home across that Main Street Bridge and on 211, it's simply dangerous. Some of my other neighbors, uh, Joel and, and Judy, who actually walk frequently around Sperryville, need safe space to walk. So I encourage you to, in, to engage this discussion, think about how we can make Sperryville a friendlier place again. I do want to say one thing about funding because this topic comes up a lot. I spent 30 years in government doing budgets. Um, as many of you know, Congress passed one of the largest infrastructure bills we've ever had. That money has been appropriated and is being distributed to the states. That money will be spent. It is on us if we decide to invest in our community or if we let Loray take our money and invest in their community. So I, I encourage us to find our path forward and to begin to seek those grants to actually pay for this work. It's important work and I think it'd be great for our community. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks, Terry. Hi, Tak Takaleski, Piedmont, also on Thornton Gap at the Church Road in Sperryville, uh, speaking in support of, uh, first want to thank you for doing the study and support for most of the things. And specifically, as Carrie just mentioned, uh, my neighbors, the Kirschmans, and many of the other people on my road live close enough to the village to walk to it. And the bridge on the west side where Main Street meets 211 is the most terrifying part of the walk. So I was excited to see that in there, and I encourage you to... Um, to consider that in, in that spot in particular. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, since everybody's talking about um Dabney Kirchman, uh, Piedmont District, obviously, and I, as well as my daughter, walked down from Thornton Gap Church Road and across the street, and kindly the neighbors let us walk in their yard so we're not in 211 getting run over. But when you're making that cross, over to Main Street, it is absolutely terrifying, and you're looking at people coming off the mountains and motorcycles coming, and you're just praying a little bit, and it would be wonderful. I, I also am, so, I'm, I, I don't know the detail. I've read it. The details can be worked out, but it would be just wonderful to have the speed limit 25 through the whole freaking area and sidewalks that you could walk on without fear of your life, whether you're walking your dog, getting exercise or going to work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Ray Bach. I'm from Sperryville, Piedmont. I just want to speak to the bridge on Main Street. Uh, you know, we're all concerned about flooding as it's occurred in Kentucky recently. That could happen here too. And one of the one of the problems with flooding is when you have a bridge like the one on Main Street with the center column, there's a log there right now that's caught up against that column. And um, that's the beginnings of a debris jam which could back up water, uh, what is it, west of Main Street? And up to, you know, and, and I don't know if you remember two years ago, three years ago, we had that two or three inches in one hour and water was over 211. 
uh, it would be much worse if uh, some of that debris piled up there. So I'm speaking also from the experience of, as an engineer who worked in flood control. So that's, a, that's an important thing. And there's a few trees in the, in the stream downstream that should be cleared up too, just north of the uh, 522 bridge. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Judy Kress, and I'm here to comment about the walking trail in Sperryville, the whole issue. You know, 25 pages is a lot of information. And for us to be able to decipher all of that this evening, um, I had heard today that the best thing we could do would be to send it to the Planning Commission. Is that the thing? Is that a possibility? I mean, I'm going to comment here, and getting into too much question and answer is a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. But um, the Planning Commission is one of the options. Mm -hmm. I think it would be remiss of us to send it down without doing some public outreach of our own. Okay. And um, I mean, I don't want to skip to the ending, but uh, I was thinking we should, you know, kind of work in pairs along with our planning commission representative and do uh, public listening sessions. Well, I hear a lot of like, okay, this is not the real deal. This is not what we're going to finally have a final paper. So, you know, we need to know exactly what we're signing up for before we do, you yeah, know. And I'm no, glad this gentleman back here knows us for walking. My husband and I walk all the time. I'm not so sure why everyone, yes, there's a lot of traffic, but I do know to wait for that traffic to go by. So, you know, um, we have never, I haven't been frightened walking on the highway. We walk up 211, back up Estes Mill Road, back Woodward Road, down Main Street, 211, back the old Holla, whatever, you know. Um, so I'm not all that concerned. I am concerned with talk on the bridge there and not allowing people to be able to turn right. We have people that come down 211 now. We live right on 211 there, right beside Thornton Gap Church Road whether it's the GPS directing the people and they miss the turn down Main Street, what do they do? They come down and they make a U-turn in front of our house. So I'm thinking, okay, you don't allow people to turn right. We will have that continuously and you want to put a sidewalk up in front of my house? Just, you know, for what? What is the purpose of the sidewalk up to Atkins Road? Well, I have to say, and this is one of the pitfalls of having somebody do a study that doesn't have any public interaction. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I do understand your frustration because even as a public official, I had to be hands off as well. And so, you know, there were a lot of things that I read this in the study that I thought, well, that won't fly. Mm -hmm. But um, I may know that and, and you may know that, but part of the process is, is working through those details. Right. So I, I do hear your frustration and share your frustration that we received an early working document, which to my mind contained a lot of language that was not really appropriate for a recommendations document. And then we received language from VDOT that got in a lot of conditions and was, as you said, a, a lot of dense reading. And I'm still not concerned I'm still not convinced that all of the situations um, that present difficulties are represented in the document because it had no local buy-in when it was crafted. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I hear you, and I, I share a lot of your concerns. So at the bridge there in Sperryville, is there consideration for one of the RF, RRFB crossing lights or whatever? Well, I mean, I think you're, when I read about RRFB crossing lights, and if, if these are board decisions and we should seek a lot of public input, mm -hmm. but I do know when I see those lights, they're in very urban areas. Right. And we've had flashing lights before in the village mm -hmm. and people didn't like them and we ended up taking them down right. because they weren't a fit for our rural character. So that's just a flashing light, not necessarily someone who wants to cross the street, that they hit a button. It's normally that somebody would hit a button, and then it would flash, and then someone would cross the street. Like you see on the UVA campus, that right. sort of thing. Well, I can see that in a rural place, but if you... I sit on my porch every day and see traffic on 211, and in the fall, 
how many people are going to push that button and want to cross that road for track? You're going to back up traffic. It's bad enough as it is, but you're going to back it up for miles up the road. So, you know, I think there's a lot of things that need to be considered. Yeah, wonderful. It's nice to get out and walk and all of those things, but there's a lot of other issues that are in this proposal that, you know, really need to be considered other than just a walking trail. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Thank you. Joel Cress, I'm also a Piedmont district. I just want to add to what my wife has spoken. We live in 11979 Lee Highway, so we are directly beside uh, Thornton Gap Church Road and, and Ryan's Road, one on either side. So that's what she is speaking of when she talks about the U-turns that we have. We have at least a couple a day coming both ways. I mean, people will miss the turn going on 522 or they'll miss uh, Main Street. And their GPS complains they missed their turn and they must stop in front of our house prior to the point that it says recalculate and complete the triangle. So they're not able to think about that. They don't see on their nav system. In other words, we have that situation happening quite often. I see any type of left turn restriction complicating that situation. I'm also very concerned about the fact that even though we would like to see 25 mile per hour restriction, they're not going 45 as it is. Uh, they have open road from Clevenger's Corner to Sperryville. And once they hit the end of that four lane, they're still barreling on down the road. And I really don't see 25 miles per hour helping. And, and are these restricted crossings, uh, I would not feel any safer with that. It might help my survivors win a lawsuit, but it's not going to help me feel safer crossing because, to be quite honest, I would not trust anyone to actually stop. We already have a state law that says they should be stopping at our crosswalks, and we have to be very careful when we do have the couple that we have. People have not been stopping, or when they do stop, we're trying to wave them on because there's other traffic that's just not going to stop. And so I, I don't know that signals are going to help. Um, we need to be very careful, especially with Route 211. Um, I've seen there, we've been there, uh, we, we've been in the county for 30 years. My wife's family has been here for over 100. So we're residents of this county. We've seen it change. We've seen the traffic density increase significantly over the years. And where we're living now, since we've been since 2013, we've been there, my father-in-law lived there before then, we've watched the traffic increase, a lot of commuter traffic. But I will say, and I'll add, like my wife said, even though traffic has increased, we have not really personally felt um, any safety issue. We walk all the way to Estes Mill Road, and we've normally had a good experience. People will pass by, they'll, they'll get over, we'll wave, they'll wave back. We are very well off with, you know, walking up. We've never had an instance at this point where we have felt unsafe. Now crossing the bridge, I'll agree with all the others. When we cross the bridge on Main Street, we have to uh, scoot on across. But to bring it to close, I would say, the cheapest way, and I know business owners won't like this, but if you want to solve the traffic problem on Main Street, remove that bridge altogether, put you a barricade there, and that will stop all the traffic problem. Uh, I find that what we typically have going up and down Main Street are RVs. We have 20-foot trailers going up through there. A lot of through traffic on Main Street would stop. GPS routing problems would stop. U-turns in our front yard would stop if you just simply took the bridge out. Uh, we can put a little park there for everybody. We have a little platform so we can put our bands and they can play and whatever, you know, benches on the river maybe. But to actually, if you want to fix that problem, that's what I'd say would be the cheapest solution. Just remove the bridge altogether. But I know people don't want it that, and I get the feeling we want to connect 211 to Main Street for business reasons. And just be upfront with us as taxpayers, as county people, that's what the issue really is. But if it's traffic control or pedestrian safety, I'm not sure that this plan is really addressing that and needs more study. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. I'm Patricia Brennan. I'm a Piedmont resident. I have a business in Sperryville, and I also live in, outside of Sperryville for 41 years now. And um, my business is Thornton River Art, and I employ you to come and sit on my porch and see how fast traffic goes by every single day. And I worry about people trying to get to my shop. Because if you step out of that sidewalk, you are in the road. It is, Carrie's building's already been hit twice. Um, I, I don't know about all the other plans and all the other parts of the detail of, of this study, but I do know that somehow we have to slow the traffic down on Main Street before someone gets hit. Because it's, it's inevitable, and I would hate for that to be a liability, and nobody did anything about it. So I don't know what the answer is, um, but I'm so happy for this study. I'm so grateful for you to be able to consider a solution because there's definitely needs to be a solution to this problem. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Betty. Thanks, Betty. Robin Day, Piedmont. Um, just kind of stand here and agree <laughs> with everyone, but I just you know want to get up here and let my voice be heard. But I'm all for this. Main Street traffic. I walk it every morning. You can set your watch. 9.05. I'm headed for before and after. And my dog wanders, and she will step out into the street. I mean, I can blindfold myself, and she'll take the left-hand turn to go into the little alley for before and after. She knows that. But if a car's coming, and they do come fast, I mean, I've thought of myself, how can I slow them down? I've thought about, you know, dodging out in front of them or pretending to to make them slam on their brakes but something has to be done about the 25 and i just want to comment about that bridge i mean sort of like you close that bridge and they'll be you turning in front of my house okay when they can't get across that bridge but uh i mean it's one thing to say well that won't work that won't work that won't work if we're going to get up here let's if we don't like that idea let's give ideas what will rather than saying, well, you know. And also, if you close the bridge, they're still going to miss the other turn, and they're going to make that U-turn and fire your house again. So, you know, I mean, I think that's the nature of the beast in highway travel. You miss a turn, you turn around. You don't think about how many times, you know, someone has backed into your yard, you know, or you're going into someone's yard. It just happens. But anyway, I'm just letting my voice be heard in support of Sperryville speed limit. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. I'm Fran Krebser from Wakefield, and I agree with all of the suggestions that have come in tonight. But I'm so glad you're going to look at something for, Wake for Wakefield and Flint Hill. Those people come through Flint Hill like crazy. Tractor trailers, cars, it is really frightening. And there have been several accidents there. I really appreciate all the work you all do. And I hope you continue to look out for the safety of Rappahannock citizens because we really do need to fix both these problems. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Yes, sir. Tommy Atkins, Jackson District, but I also was born and raised in Spurryville, and I continue to have a house in Spurryville, and I have property in Spurryville, in the village. And I have a lot of history with Spurryville. I go back to 1946 when I was born there. I was born and raised in Spurryville, Virginia, and I migrated to Amosville. But this, this study is a good study, but there's a lot of things that needs to really be looked at. 
There's a lot of devil in the details of this, this report. This, except the fact that this report mainly is dealing with the business of Spurryville. Back when I was raised in Spurryville, every house or every building in there had a family in it. It was no business in there. There was three stores. There was Jimmy and Mutt Atkins store. There was Ed Esther store. And the corner store was owned by, uh, I forget the name of the elder of the people. Swartz. Swartz, correct. And we walked the streets of Spurryville to go to school. They came out of, they even came out of Woodward Road. We all joined and walked down the ones of us that was going to Spurville Elementary School, one through seven, we walked to school. We didn't have a problem. Yeah, there was less traffic back then, uh, but we didn't have a problem with being hit. I never heard of a case of anybody being hit in the village of Spurville of students walking to school. But there were students back then. There was families. The teachers at the a Spurville school, Miss Della Hitt, Miss Moffitt, the second grade teacher, lived in Spurville. They had a home in Spurville. They didn't have to come from Lou Ray, or they didn't have to come from uh, Front Royal or somewhere to come in here to teach. They had a, they had a home in the village of Spurville, and that that is all gone away. I know history, you know history moves on, things change, but you know. The street, Main Street has been paid, recently paid. Nice job. Yes, somebody is going to say that it increase, increases the speed limit. There is a way to decrease that speed limit. Speed cameras will stop it. Speed cameras will stop it. When you start, and you don't have to have a person there to, to write, have that ticket sent to them. It gets their tag. And it gets mailed to them. You don't have to have an, you don't have to have a deputy there to do it. It can be done. Look at DC. Look at the millions of dollars that they they rake in a speed 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 cameras. So that is a way. And there are other com, traffic common methods that can be applied. You know you have areas in the metropolitan areas, Fairfax. Prince William, Manassas, Loudon, Arlington. I've worked there for 35 years. I know a little bit about the traffic. So there are other traffic common methods that can be applied. And we just need to look at it, study, and work with that. But um, I, I do think you've got a, you've got a long-term plan here to work with. But I don't think it needs to be the most critical thing to be worked on in this county at this present time. I don't think it's the most critical thing. Housing for our people is one of the most critical things needed in this county. Housing. I don't know how you want to talk about affordable housing, whatever you want to call it, but we need to have changes made in this county that the people, families, can be raised in this county. And they can achieve their dream of owning a little piece of property in God's country. Rappahannock County is God's country. They can own a little piece of property and have a home on it. And they can raise their family in the area that they was born and raised in. That, to me, is one of the top priorities in this county that needs to be worked on. Thank you for listening. And I know y'all have a difficult job. I understand it. And I appreciate everything you do to help the people in this county. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Thanks, Tommy. Remind us, the speed cameras can't be used. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Code of Virginia does not allow counties to deploy speed cameras unless it's in a construction zone or a school speed zone. And that's only recently been allowed in the last couple of years. But some cities, probably, it's different rules. Well, Okay, that's good. Can I just say my whole thing? Sure. You, uh, we've also, since 
Main Street and Spurville is strictly business. It's mainly business. We could do like the old town Warrington. We block it off. You know, they got their they got their eateries right out in the street. So you could do that. Old town Warrington does it. And it works very well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lauren Taylor, Piedmont District. My husband, Yurka, spoke earlier. Um, we're relatively new to the area. We live just off Atkins Road. One constant that we've heard throughout the evening is that uh, congestion is a problem, and one way to address that would make it less to, would be to make it less necessary to use a vehicle to access the village. Uh, my husband and I walk into the village all the time. It's one of the reasons we bought our home. Walkability is really important to us. The times when we do use a car to get into the village would be when it's after dark or there's inclement weather and we don't feel very safe crossing. If we were to have sidewalks and a lower speed limit, we would be able to rely on our car even less than we do now. And that's something that we would really appreciate and we encourage you to consider. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Diane Bruce, Berryville. Uh, I am in favor of everything that we've heard here tonight, everything that's in the uh, plan. I think it'll be very difficult to execute a lot of it. Maybe some of it's unnecessary, uh, but something needs to be done to get started, and this is the way to start. The thing that I think could be done goes beyond the plan but I think it could be done fairly easily, and that is to reduce the speed limits uh, in town and to find a way to enforce them. If you turn at the corner store and head towards Sperryville, almost immediately there's a sign that says 25 miles per hour. But when you make that left turn and head towards Sp uh, Culpeper, there are so many other things going on that basically you don't see that 25 mile per hour sign. That sign should be moved down to maybe the Methodist Church. So once a car gets straightened out and ready to go, all of a sudden there's a sign and he sees the speed limit. Another thing that needs to happen on that section of road, I believe, is to get rid of the passing uh, lines. In, starting in front of the Baptist Church is a passing line heading east towards the cemetery. And what happens if a person is going through there at 25 miles an hour, Everybody else speeds up and passes and takes off and hauls up the hill. Um, coming into Sperryville from the Culpeper direction, there is a passing line. Same thing. Way back beyond the Route 231 uh, turn, there's a sign that says 45 miles per hour. That's coming from Culpeper towards Sperryville. Before you get to 231, there's a sign that says 45 miles per hour. Well, they're usually doing 65. Then there's another sign that says 45 miles per hour. Then there's one that says it's going to be 25. And then there's one that says 25. Makes no difference. They don't see it. There's a passing lane. I have been coming down that section of road, getting ready to make a left turn into my house, and I have been passed by a car behind me more than once. And not when the, uh, not when the, uh, center line is in their favor, but when the center line is pointing in the opposite direction. I don't know why they're in such a hurry, but, but they are. And so I walk a lot in Sperryville. Uh, it's quite dangerous. Uh, I step off into the grass when cars go by. Uh, sometimes I do this, but uh, it's really hard to slow down the traffic. One of the things that I have been told by law enforcement is they don't typically give a, a speeding ticket unless you're doing more than 10 miles per hour over the speed limit. So if the speed limit's 25, they're not going to give a ticket unless you're doing 35 or more. Uh, in front of my house, there's a sign that says 45. They see that sign all the way back at the Methodist Church. All they see is a, a field, open space, and... Usually they're doing 65 when they cross in front of my house. Uh, 
Now, nobody's been hurt. You know, I don't step out there in front of them. But it's enforcement. How are we going to enforce it? And I agree with what Tommy said about uh, some kind of uh, speed camera, although I don't think we can do that in Virginia. But we have, or they have from time to time, put those uh, cameras up that show you how fast you're going. And when they have been installed, we can see the difference. People slow down. I think your cars are so powerful, they're quiet, you don't realize how fast you're going. Uh, so somehow I'd like to see some way to enforce uh, the speed limits that we do have. And thank you for working on this, and uh, let's all get together and get it done. Thank you. Mary Catherine Ishii, um, Sparrowville, Piedmont. Um, I, I, I sort of in a listening mode on this study at the moment. There's a lot in there, and uh, it's important to hear what you know my neighbors think about this. But I will say, in Woodville, which is a smaller area than Sparrowville, even um, I slow down every single time I hit that area because I know there is a policeman sitting in the corner of the church lot, and he catches every single person that goes there. And one of the studies, psychological studies they do on law enforcement um, says that uh, the uh, amount of the penalty or the severity of the penalty is not as important as knowing you're going to get the penalty. So you can have the death penalty, but if it's only applied once every 300 years, nobody pays attention to it. But if you get a slap on the wrist, but you know you're going to get that slap on the wrist every single time, that's an incentive not to do it. So... I agree with many of the, many of the things that folks have said, um, but enforcement is probably going to be a, a big key. Thank you. Anyone else in the courtroom? Seeing none, I do know we've got some folks on Zoom, including Mr. Mooney from the Rappahannock Rapid, Rappahannock Rapid and Regional Commission. Um, anybody wishing to speak with regards to this public hearing item, please raise your Zoom hand. And just in case people don't know how, I'll go ahead and let them unmute. Okay. One last time, anybody on Zoom wishing to speak? All right. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing, 758, and open it up to the board. Well, I guess I have several questions, Madam Chair, but uh, funding, uh, when you see the price range here, uh, it's a considerable difference in funding, and I just wonder, you know, is it some type of 20%, 20-80% split, or what, what would be expected of us? Does anybody have any information there? The, um, these sorts of projects would be likely fundable through the TAP program that the board is familiar with. Uh, as was referenced uh, today, um, the various pandemic relief infrastructure bills have significantly sweetened the pot on those grants over the next four or five years from about $850 million a year to $1.4 million. No, $850 billion? billion. I don't know. Big numbers. I have the paper somewhere. You got the right number of zeros there, Karen? The right, the right numbers, the wrong number I of zeros. I don't worry too much about it. Yeah. But, uh, also, I mean, it's just so much. But that's 80-20. Yeah, 80-20. Um, and if the county has to come up with that 20%, I just wonder if we would do a special tax district. I mean, these are not questions we would resolve tonight, but if the Sperryville businesses want these improvements, it's not unheard of, even in Rappahannock County, to do a special tax district where the businesses pay higher taxes for a certain period of time. But, uh, I mean, there, there's that that we could discuss. But I'm just wondering, you know, uh, unfortunately, I didn't grow up here, but I, we came back a lot and visited because my other side of the family from Sperryville. And uh, I also worked on 66 extension from Gainesville to 81. I remember when there was a lot of traffic 
it came through Rappahannock because it, it didn't have any other way to go back in those days. So I just wonder what the traffic counts are now compared to those days when I, Mr. Atkins uh, stated that, you know, people walked everywhere. I, I just don't know. There just seems like there's a lot of information that we don't have. And I think that we, we just need to, you know, continue gathering information. This is, this is a study um, without a lot of input, it appears. Nobody asked me, but yet I read in here where Sperryville wants X, Y, Z. How did they get that information? Ms. Smith said that she didn't have much input into it or any. I didn't have any input. I was told it was a third-party well, study. If, yeah, if they didn't talk to anybody in Sperryville for public input, how did they find out that Sperryville wanted to be a walking neighborhood? Who, who told these people that? I think they had access to the... Um the Spiritville Community Alliance studies that were performed, I imagine they but they're gathered not, it from they're, that. they're not an official public group. Well, I, don't, uh, I understand your point. I don't think a group needs to be official to uh, express the interest of a community. I think but it is would, one voice think, among many no, voices. No, I think they would have to be. Oh, well, I, think, I guess the two of us disagree on that point, but... It's, right. it's a voice among voices. That it's, this a voice board among, has to, it's a voice among voices, yeah. but it's not an official voice. I don't disagree with that. You do or you don't? I do not disagree that okay, there yeah. are many voices need to be heard and considered. Right, and, right. And many, that's many where voices. this board assimilates all of that information to try to uh, you know, so I'm, decide I'm not, I'm not trying to be a bad guy here. I try to sit up here and look um, aggravated at everybody to speak. I hope I did, did, did a good job of doing that. You know, I try not to pick favorites. So... Um, the thing is, if you're talking about spending public money, I don't think the people of Chester Gap or Amosville should be paying for sidewalks in Sperryville. It doesn't benefit us. I, I have a couple of businesses that I attend to uh, visit in Sperryville, but I drive there, I get in my truck or car, and I drive right back to Amosville, or maybe I stop on the way over the mountain or something, but I don't walk anywhere in Sperryville. Not that I don't like it. I just have no use for it. And there's going to be a lot of taxpayers in the county that have the same feelings I have. As a matter of fact, they've already been expressed to me that it's not so much they don't care what they do in Flint Hill or Amosville, I mean, uh, Sperryville, they just don't want to pay for it. And I think that's a fair, fair position to take. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that we need to be on an information gathering tour, if you will, and... Uh, Maybe, maybe schedule something with the Planning Commission, but this is planning. Unfortunately to me, it looks like urban planning in a rural area, and I really think that the Planning Commission should be involved in it at, at some point in time, very soon, before we spend a lot of time on it ourselves. When do they complete the study? Mid-August, you say? Or are they finalized? Uh, their scope through the state ends, I believe, on the 8th or something like that. Doesn't mean that you don't pick this up and do whatever you want with it, whether you use tool design or some other group. But I imagine that if we fed them or gave them feedback, they would incorporate that into their final product. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, VDOT has already said they don't want to drop the speed limit. We've asked them several times about that. Right. And so they that's said their own internal studies say that they shouldn't drop the speed limit. And that's based on the conditions on the ground. And so as VDOT's input into the 28th report makes clear, and as, as I noted to a few, that the speed limits on the roads are consistent with the pedestrian accommodations on the road. And so if you have a sidewalk and crosswalks, then that affects the speed limit analysis and what appropriate speed limit is in place. But, but crosswalks, I was on Eade Street in Arlington uh, not too long ago. It's probably been three years ago because the vehicle that I was driving has been off the road for about two years. But... Uh, we had pedestrians in a crosswalk, and I stopped. I stopped for those pedestrians in a crosswalk, and a, and the black Mercedes Benz behind me was blowing the horn. So I had two choices: either you know obey what I thought was the law and stop for pedestrians in a crosswalk, or bowl them over. And that made me so aggravated that I drove straight from there back to Warrington to the DMV and went in and got the driver's manual and looked at it. This is pre-COVID, and sure enough, it's still in there. Stop for pedestrians and crosswalks. But crosswalks don't mean nothing to certain people. 
and I've said this before, as long as DMV keeps giving driver's license out to stupid people, none of this is going to help. That's where the problem exists, is you have stupid people driving cars. But I'm not going to say that in public. <laughs> well, and, and I, I just, I, I want to kind of dovetail into some of the things that have been said this evening, and I would like to hear from Mr. Monty about the methodology and input um, for the study, but I, I, I do think, you know, it is, it is how do you affect human behavior? That's the, that's the question to, to answer. I don't, I think a lot of the things in this study will create a lot of visual clutter. And there's already a lot of visual clutter in the village. I'll always already a lot of signs telling people what to do, but they don't necessarily do what the signs tell them to do. And we see that with tractor trailers that end up in the village where they don't belong, people that don't slow down, people that pass when there's no lines on their side for a passing lane. So how do you affect human behavior in, in ways that will work? And um, I, I don't know if everyone here tonight is aware, but the board uh, did move and unanimously support um, speed display signs in both Flint Hill and Sperryville last November. And we're waiting for staff to conclude um, where those are viable and oversee their installation because that is a very effective way to control behavior. Because Woodville, Woodville's too. Uh, possibly Woodville. And they generally lower speeds. Um, they're very effective by 5 to 10 miles an hour when there's that reminder that this is what the speed limit and this is what you're doing. The other beauty of those speed displays is while it's not issuing tickets, um, they do have a way to collect the data that they are telling folks at the same time. So over time, we can build um, you know, a data set that will show this is the behavior in that area, and, um, and it really needs to be improved. How do we improve that behavior? So I do think it's incredibly unfortunate that there's not headway on that and that we need to set a deadline on that. Um, we approved it last November. I wish it was done already. Um, I know we've had some back and forth about this because our VDOT representative was here at the 2 p.m. meeting. Um, but to me, that's a valuable, valuable tool that now we don't have. Um, we're coming up onto another season where we'll be exceptionally busy. We're already busier. We see it in our uh, receipts every month um, for meals and lodging taxes and sales tax. So we know that businesses are very busy and there is a lot of traffic and we're heading into a fall and um, what's the timeline where we feel we can accomplish getting those in place, Gary? Uh, I was trying to think back what the action was and I think I was empowered to work with VDOT to identify the locations and bring them back to the board for consideration and of ultimate approval. Um, uh, but uh, as we discussed earlier, it's a function of priorities and if this is the board's top priority, then um, you can make that be known and we'll shuffle the deck and make sure that this is the top priority and other things will wait for this to be done as opposed to the other way around. What are the other things on the list? I sent you the board a list of, I think, 30 some odd items that are queued and ready to be done and this is one of them. I don't have that in my instant recall. Well, I mean, I'd like to see it done by mid-November. Yeah. I don't know how the rest of the board feels about it. Well, I think that in terms of the study, I think that we can all agree that uh, we, have a, we have a traffic problem because uh, we have a beautiful county and we have the National Park right next to us and we have a lot of folks coming out here. And I think that this has identified some things that I think a lot of folks would just absolutely love. Um, I think sidewalks are a net plus anywhere in any community and they're, they just... Uh, they address safety issues. I think if we can start to address uh, some speed calming, if we can if we can kind of try to lower the temperature on how fast people are driving through Sparable, I think we're going to make a huge, huge improvement um, because 
My prediction is that it's just going to be more and more and more cars. Um, and whether they're even stopping in Sperryville or just going through it to the park is just something that perhaps we don't even, you know, it's just going to happen. Um, this is a, a big study, and I think it's a, a, a good start. And I think that, um, I think it would be uh, useful, uh, since they're uh, going to conclude this on August 8th, that if there is something that we would like uh, to be added, put in, taken out in terms of what we can discuss here tonight, that we, we should take advantage of that. I'm not sure if, that, if we give them feedback, if they get back to us or what the timeline is on that. I mean, I'm, I'm coming into this. I wasn't here in October, obviously, to, when this was decided. But um, I feel like we have an advantage now to say, hey, let's, you know, we can focus on this. And I hear us all agreeing in the sense that people drive too fast. Um, but, but I do think that sidewalks are a net plus, whether you do all of them, some of them. But that's something I feel like we can talk about. Well, I mean, I think you bring up an interesting point, And, um, you know, I, and I, Mr. Nesbitt's not here tonight, but, I, you know, in walking some places in the village, um, there would be big implications for homeowners if sidewalks are installed that are ADA compliant because... There's just not a lot of real estate in some places in the village, which is, I think, conversations we need to have mm -hmm. before we rubber stamp sidewalks. I mean, it doesn't take much of a drive through the village to realize that a lot of the homes are not very far off the road. And so you're either talking about making a one-way road or not having them be ADA compliant. There's just... There's just no room to work with, um, which is, that is a very large conversation to have. I think when you look at affecting behavior and you're saying, well, if we do this, then people will do this. Well, maybe, um, because I, I, I read about the walkways across 211, but what if, what if people don't stop? Well, I believe that if we put the RRFB, it will allow us to bring the 20, it down to 25. And well, if we don't, uh, VDOT has said they won't. Um, right. Now, where we put that, I think, is a huge discussion. And, and you're right in the sense that we're not rubber stamping anything. Right. Tonight. I mean, not, well, That's not happening. I mean, we, we can put up signs, but people have been driving that way their whole life. And what if people don't slow down? I think there's a big component of enforcement here that we need to discuss. And um, really, I think we need to reach out to our sheriff's department and ask her if there are other patrol options for both Flint Hill and for Sperryville. And if it's a matter of funding, I, I think we need to figure out ways to make that happen. Because really, it's so bad on 211 now and on Main Street as well. Um, so my suggestion was actually sort of like when they close this, uh, this is it. This will be the work product we get. Um, so if we have suggestions, today I feel is the date to do that. Um, they're done. It's, it's a grant-funded study. Didn't run through the county. This is it. So um, I'm just thinking if we want to have them look, change, add anything, now's the time to do it. What would what, what we I'm ask them to do? I don't know. I, I would suggest that at a bare minimum that um, you craft a statement relative to the overall process and the fact that foundations that are compatible with that sort of uh, area. Well, this this study and this pot of funds is specifically for rural localities to do this kind of review. But are they picturesque, Gary? <laughs> I suppose they could shake the RFB lights uh, as a flower or something. I don't know. <laughs> and their their August eighth or whatever deadline is specific to the grant. Is That's that specific one? to the grant. We could we can engage tool design afterwards, and and, and they told us that they're not going to freeze us out, but that's when they stop getting paid by the state, okay. which is already a month extension. To me, what I've heard... And, and the eighth might not be the right number. It's somewhere around. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, for me, and, and at least in the Wakefield District, Flint Hill, um, we're consistent, right? The speed is the issue. Um, being concerned about sitting at a table next to 522, if you think it's bad, come over to Skyward. 
um, and try to have a conversation in the morning. It's crazy. Um, so I think speed is a consistent issue, one that we can all agree something needs to happen. Enforcement is big, and I don't know. Um, definitely need to get the sheriff involved because she's only got so many deputies, and um, they run radar a lot, but it doesn't seem to be slowing folks down necessarily in Flint Hill anyway. Um, sidewalks, certain areas, people are really excited to have sidewalks. Other areas, they're like, I don't mind walking on dirt. I've done it for all my life. Dirt's fine. Uh, the crosswalks, I think, in Flint Hill anyway, would help some. Um, I would love to be able to get people safely across the road and at least give the driver something to go, oh, this is different. It's a crosswalk. Um, whether they pay attention to it or not is another thing, but I do believe there's a visual there that you don't necessarily see if it's not there when somebody is trying to cross from the left side to the right or vice versa. So I would like um, sidewalks, I mean the crosswalks I think are a safety and hopefully will slow people down. I heard from multiple folks they don't like the uh, three-way stop idea at Crest Hill. And uh, VDOT took most references to that out in the 28th. Okay. They um, through their comments that led to the 28th report. But what I did hear was that turn is very difficult, especially if you've got horse trailer or somebody already on Crest Hill trying to turn on the 522 and somebody on 522 trying to turn on Crest Hill right there at, um, between Skyward and Truist. It's very tight. And I'm wondering how difficult it would be for Truist to give up a little bit more grass and not have to cut it and give us more room at that turn. We definitely think that would make sense. Um, bottom line, if we don't do anything, I don't see this getting any better. And I really don't want to be here talking about someone that's been injured um, because we did nothing. So um, next steps would be wonderful to, to know happy to engage, I'm sure you are as well, and do some uh, meetings with people at the fire department or whatever, just to get more feedback, but um, I, I don't want to do nothing in Flint Hill anyway. No, oh, it's not unheard of. The county has done joint meetings at the firehouses, so, I mean, with five magisterial districts in Flint Hill and Chester Gap being two different ones, you may have to have six meetings. It's not unheard of. Since Patrick's no. on the call, should we ask him for any insight, input? Mr. Money, do you have anything to add after hearing all the conversation? Um, just making sure you can hear me, uh, Chair Donkey. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, if I could, and, and I appreciate the opportunity um, for yourself to share members of the board. I, I did want to, to speak to Supervisor Smith's question about um, sort of the process and the, the methodology that was used. Um, just very briefly, it, in my opinion, the, the methodology that, that Tool Design used was, you know, some initial feedback from um, county staff as well as um, regional commission staff, just in terms of here's what we've heard in terms of some of the needs, both in Flint Hill and in Sperryville. Um, and the majority of the work that they completed was really through uh, a field, field visit um, to both locations. Um, you know, if you actually, the, the item that's on the screen right now sort of talks through the, the scope of work and review of available GIS data, which obviously is, is pretty limited um, for those areas, mostly consisting of VDOT um, centerline data and then some of the other um, available statewide uh, data sets. Um, and, and then really, the, the task that they, you know, completed was was going through and, and doing some of their, from, that, from those field visits, from aero photography review, um, making some, again, sort of planning level conceptual design ideas um, designed specifically to address the, the ideas that were talked about in terms of traffic calming uh, and pedestrian enhancement where it makes sense. Um, and the other thing I would say <clears throat> from, from my perspective is that this is, I think as Mr. Curry has mentioned, this is really a planning level document um, that the board is able to, you know, I think the idea of going out to some, some community meetings is, is a good one. The board is really able to, to make a decision as to, you know, what role do we play moving forward with any of these, which of the ideas 
included in this um, in this technical mem memorandum make sense for the board to prioritize if any of the, the items um, included there. Um, and so that's sort of an ongoing process. I, I think uh, I agree with, with what's been stated, that the compressed time frame that, that's put in place on, on this technical assistance made it difficult um, for the public outreach process to occur, but I don't think that prevents the board, county staff, as well as commission staff, if, if that's a desire for you to work with us to continue that public engagement beyond um, the, the distribution of this the final memorandum, which would come after that um, August 8th date that Mr. Curry mentioned. So I think it's it's sort of the, it, it gives a, a starting point and does some, some planning work, uh, put some planning work in place that, that wasn't there previously um, that I think has been, has been talked about for a long time in both of the villages. Uh, Mr. Monty, uh, Christine Smith, if I, if I may, Madam Chairman. Yep. Um, I know a lot of the initial project, the initial gateway project, um, was designed uh, for, for flood prevention in the village. And was there any technical attention paid to that in drafting these documents? Not that I'm aware of, and I, I certainly offer Mr. Curry a chance to correct me if I'm wrong. What I what I would say in terms of um, you know flood prevention and things of, of that nature is that when you're talking about future funding sources, that's a, a potential beyond the, the transportation alternatives program that was mentioned previously, um, because there would be co-benefits related potentially to uh, some of the improvements there. Um, I don't think, other than probably looking at where the floodplain you know, boundaries are delineated in, in both Sperryville and if there are any in, in Foothill, um, I don't think that was something that they looked at specifically. Thank uh, you. The only reason the, the bridge and the bridge pier came up is because I said that's a great reason to get rid of this bridge. Mm -hmm. Well, well not maybe. Get, replace the bridge, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> replace the bridge. <laughs> replace the bridge. <laughs> Because when, when VDOT replaces the bridge, they have to come to us and ask if we want pedestrian accommodations provided on those bridges. And we've gone through this a couple of times. And uh, so then we wouldn't have to pay for it. So the sources of input again for the study, could you just recap them one more time for me, Mr. Monty? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, the, the, I think the primary sources, if you, if you spoke to, to Megan at Tool, who's the, the project lead, came from their, their field visits, which I believe were completed in April, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they, they did Flinthill and Sperryville um, at the same time, uh, did some, some field visits, took some, you know, obviously some notes, some pictures, some evidence that they collected just to um, give them a sense of what it looked like currently on the ground. Um, they also use you know available GIS data, which frankly is, is mostly state level, um, like beat up road center line, probably some edge um, pavements and, and intersection data, along with existing crash data and things of, of that nature. Um, and, and then really from there, I think probably had you know conversations with uh, Mr. Curry. I don't know if there's anyone else from county staff spoke with myself and one other staff member from the commission who's no longer um, with our office, uh, just to kind of get a sense of you know, what we had seen in sort of the existing background and existing conditions. And they were supposed to dialogue with VDOT and receive input from VDOT, but it might appear that didn't happen until the very end. So suggestions on next steps? Be displays, increase enforcement, um, or at least increased patrols. Um, and again, that's a dialogue with the sheriff and possibly a, a funding discussion there as well. Well, I've mentioned it before and I've seen it in, in operation. You can park an empty cruiser and that will get a lot of people to slow down. The regulars that use that road will then have to gamble. Is today an empty cruiser that's a dummy? Or is it a real one sitting there? Uh, but the uh, out-of-towners, I was talking to a, a state trooper, none that anybody here would know, and he says whenever he sees a cruiser, even if he's in his cruiser, he automatically hits his brake pedal, then checks his speed. <laughs> so, I mean, when you, it, it's, it's kind of drilled in you. As Ms. Sissy said, if you think you're going to get the penalty, it makes a difference. So you see a cruiser, you hit your brake, then you check your speed. 
unless you had it on cruise or something. But I mean, it's just it's just a reflex action. And, and Falk here did it for years. They would park empty cruisers around with some dummy or something sitting in it. And again, you had to take the gamble. Is it a real one today or is it a dummy again today? But people coming through, you know, uh, tourists, uh, they see a cruiser, they hit the brakes. I did have someone ask about the additional $200 for speeding um, added to the sign. I don't know if we can check into. Yeah, there are some specific requirements on where that can be placed and where it can, and it's a process you have to ask the state to do it. And it's just like the speed display signs, um, there's various metrics you have to meet in order to put those up. And the extra $200 does flow into the local coffers, but I think that's yeah, secondary. If a deputy it's really gives a the, ticket. The, what's that? If the deputy gives a ticket, because right. we, if a state trooper gives a ticket, it right. goes it has to the state. under the local ordinance, yeah. I mean, I'd like for Sperryville and Flint Hill to have the same kind of reputation that Woodville has. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think you can put those $200 fines on a primary highway like in Flint Hill or Woodville. Maybe on Main Street in Sperryville. Amosville, we have them shooting radar a lot, but the problem is it doesn't seem to slow them down. It's almost as if they've memorized the times or something. I've had them pass me on the left with my left hand turn signal on just before I start making my turn. Mostly in my tractor, but in my truck also. <laughs> they, they don't care. Again, as long as they give stupid people driver's licenses, we're going to have meetings like this. Well, I know Mr. Curry and I received um, some video from Elizabeth Melson at Off the Grid, and I, I know we've talked to them, and you know we took that as high as we could with VDOT uh, regarding their passing lane and their speed limit. And uh, it's chilly. It's chilling to watch someone pass her as she's attempting to turn into her, her place of business. And, you know, she had her whole family with her. And they just happened to have the camera positioned to catch the whole thing. Um, we can put up every sign in the world. That doesn't mean that people are going to change their behavior. Yeah. So we've got the deadline of the 8th or whatever to finalize whatever we send back to them. Is that something you you pitching that back to you or how well do you... I if you're okay with me just crafting a general statement to place in the report acknowledging receipt and explaining that there wasn't really enough time to gain um, adequate community feedback to vet the recommendations um, I'm happy to do that and then the document will serve its future purpose of framing future conversations and framing probably targeted conversations in Flint Hill and in Sperryville with focus. It's, it's hard to drive down the road. I mean, when you're, you're doing a speed limit and people are trying to do 20 miles over the speed limit, it's difficult. Every, everybody's got the same issues. Um, I will say that... Um, as I informed the board, we did apply for a grant for to attempt to fund our SROs, and it's a non planning clause. So if we're successful in that, then we will free up funding to hire additional patrol deputies, which could, uh, you know, with coordinated efforts between the board and the sheriff, maybe you could come to some conclusion on where they would be best allocated. There's a lot of ifs uh, in that a series of ifs, but, you know, it's an opportunity. Well, I mean, I feel strongly enough about it that I think we should consider using some monies from our contingency fund. Of course, it's a matter of how much and where does it come from, but um, if more patrols are needed, I, I think that's a conversation we need to have and we need to figure out the money. Yeah. Definitely a conversation for the sheriff. It's uh, capacity limitations as well. We do receive some DMV grants for targeted enforcement, which is a lot of what you see uh, deputies out just doing speed patrols, uh, but ARPA people funds? have to sign up. Okay, is that a possibility for ARPA funds because it's general government um, yeah, matters? Yeah. We've already run out of Because we, funds. we've got less than $10 million, we can pretty much use it for anything now, the way they change the rules. But we've pretty much run out of ARPA funds unless we get some more. Uh, no, there's, we're not, I don't believe we're going to get any more, and there are, there's funding left. 
Not much. We allocated quite a bit for the all points thing. I guess it depends on what you call not much. Not much compared to 1.4 million, but much compared to hundred thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I personally would be interested in doing the listening tour or whatever you want to call well, it. At my um, to follow up on that though, ARPA funds were for uh, infrastructure, and what you're talking about spending it on salaries is not quite the same thing in the long term. If we're gonna if we're gonna build some of this stuff, maybe ARPA funds would work for that. But that would be ARPA funds not used in another area. But the problem is, if you got reoccurring expenses, you wouldn't use one-time ARPA funds. If you used it, you'd do it, do it knowing full well that either the money's going to run out and you have to replace it, or the service is going to stop. Right. We only run what twenty twenty six. Well, the money. Mm -hmm. I would separate your thought from the money because we receive less than ten billion. Literally, you can use it for anything. I mean, practically, general service, general government services. So. Um, that's not a concern, it's just the continuing obligation. What's the best way for us to reach out to the sheriff? Because um, I would think having a deputy or someone at the meetings would be beneficial. Someone that could speak. We can, we can ask her to attend the next meeting. Yeah, or, I mean, I think she would receive, I can't speak for her, but I think she would receive um, conversation from the supervisor from that district uh, in her office better than being held to account at a microphone. I'm not trying to hold her account, but I mean, then we're going back to what we talked about earlier. I understand. Today we have one supervisor talking to a constitutional officer about what we want to see, and it's not an official board action. I, you can ask her to come to a meeting, too. Do you have any concern if Ms. Smith and I went and met with the sheriff? For the, I would ask the board to empower us to meet with the sheriff for the purposes of reporting back to the board. Well, that, that's a little different than one or two members just having a meeting with her. And neither of you are on the only one of you we're is on all public clear. safety. I counted. I, I counted to three several ways, and we were all clear. I think it would be a great way to get the conversation going. And before, to Ms. Smith's point, before October, before the roads are jam packed with lots of cars. Well, and VDOT indicated we, earlier we, today that they would be willing to supply the um, trailer. The trailer. Yeah. Uh, they did, yeah. Displays. Uh, and, and I know they do that as much as they can, and they are much appreciated. Yes. But sometimes they need them for events in other places, too. So we really need to get our own. Well, yeah, if you need a motion to do that, then I'll make the motion that. Uh, the board authorizes the chair and, and Ms. Smith to meet with the sheriff and uh, to, to have this discussion to initiate it and to report back to the board with uh, suggestions or options that the sheriff proposes. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, now we'll and do we need to make a motion to empower you to write you, the, the thoughts? For Motion's you? always in order. I, I mean, what I, what can't happen is that you right. can't say, you write a paragraph and send it to us and we'll let you know if it's okay. All uh, right. Um, but I, I think I get the gist of what the feeling is. I thought the summation mm -hmm. you provided earlier mm -hmm. was very succinct and appropriate, so I would uh, empower you. I would... I would make a motion that we empower you to um, write a letter back to the consultants um, giving our feedback on the report. I'll second. All right. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, okay. Is that it on this? Uh, and uh, it is 850 million and now 1.4 billion. So I did find the piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money. Thank you. Nationwide. All right, now we're going to public comment. Because you're all still here, we're going to pub public comment. Anybody wishing to speak, um, please be recognized. Same drill, come up and give us your district and your name. And this is about anything. Still with respect to this report. Joel Cress, Piedmont District. 
Um, I was just wondering, I heard uh, our gentleman share with us that uh, flood abatement was not part of in this report. And I can understand that because the, the communities would benefit in other ways from just traffic improvements. But I was wondering as I was looking at, let's just take it in front of our house, Route 211, half a mile worth of sidewalk from 0.7 to $2.2 million. Uh, would that include storm drain, water? That's not flood abatement. That's actual water runoff and handling that if you have curved sidewalks. Everyone seems to be against uh, the pebble paver concept going through Sperryville right now down Main Street. So if we're going to have some kind of curved sidewalks, there's quite a bit of sewer water runoff handling of that since we're going to run off heading toward the Chesapeake Bay. So I'm concerned about the environmental concerns that's going to be involved with new sidewalks. Main Street has at least some form of storm sewer in Sperryville, but there's a lot of new space here we're talking about that's going to involve a lot of, of cost. And I, I personally would see $2.2 million for a half mile sidewalk be rather um, low uh, if you have to dig up and put in and install all that amount of water handling. So that would be a major concern that would have to be studied, I, I think, uh, and considered. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Yes, sir. Tak Sperryville, um, since you're going to be meeting with the sheriff, I would like to ask that you also consider talking about the um, having the sheriff's deputies aware of the rules for cars and how close they can be to bikes, and I imagine to tractors. I think this, the same rule is that a car has to give at least three feet of space, and uh, Quite frequently, that doesn't happen, and that is also an issue for safety. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rick Lassard, Piedmont District. Uh, I agree with the gentleman about stormwater, that that's an issue on Main Street. Also, um, in many places where the sidewalk is proposed, there is the sewer is below that sidewalk, so that needs to be coordinated so that they don't, if they ever have to pull the sewer up and the lines up in the road, or underneath the sidewalk, that they take some responsibility to beat out if they're going to put a sidewalk over top of the sewer that they take responsibility for. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Ray Box, Berryville. I'd like to follow up on Mr. Frazier's comment about the police car being at the track, you know, a, a speed ball calming uh, device. On Long Island, there's a community I used to be involved with, and uh, what they did, they had a patrolman named Manny, which was really a mannequin. Mm -hmm. And what they would do is put him in a, a cruiser that wasn't being used that day and park it somewhere. And it was a very effective way of slowing traffic down. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Scott McBride, Piedmont. There was a mention of uh, creating a special tax district uh, so that only the people or the businesses in Sperryville would finance these improvements. And then subsequently, Christine mentioned the meals and lodging tax. And it got me to thinking that, uh, well, if, if the folks in Chester Gap and Amosville don't really care about what goes on in Sperryville, so they don't want to pay for it, wouldn't it make sense then that, that the uh, meals and lodging taxes that are generated in Sperryville be reserved for exclusive expenditure solely on Sperryville? Well, we don't typically let public comment be a question and answer period. That's been the history of the board. But I'm happy to respond to your question, which is that there have been lots of special projects in other districts where I've thought there should be a tax district, and my peers didn't agree. Um, it's very, very hard to say all this money came from this space and to only account for it that way and to only spend it there. Mm -hmm. 
And that's not been the tradition of the county? Not recently. If, if we're going to start looking that, at that for this, it's going to get very messy very fast. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Public comment? All right, Zoom world, anybody left in Zoom world that would like to speak during public comment? Not seeing anybody in Zoom world. I'll close public comment. 842. Actually, in the past, that's how the county board, when we took care of the roads, I say we, our predecessors of <laughs> pre-Bird Act, they did have levies that they levied on like Wakefield District to build 522 or or whatever. So it's not unheard of in this county. It just hasn't been done in our time. I mean, in my time on the board, I, I think not particularly the build out of Chester Gap. I understand. And, and you know, I, I proposed that, and I think you agreed, and um, it didn't fly. So... Um, and staff seemed to think it was cumbersome to break out only supplying based on the revenue from that district. So if we're going to start doing that, we need to start doing it on several things. Yeah, if we're putting in infrastructure, though, I mean, that's the thing about building a new school. You usually finance it for 20 years, and we build one that lasts, uh, what, since Thomas Jefferson, I think, was president. <laughs> he may have gone to school there. He may have. <laughs> But, I mean, that, that's just, you know, that's, that's kind of normal procedure. It, it does happen. And uh, the, the argument was that if, you know, the Sperryville crew runs a call in Little Washington, well, then that throws your tax plan out the window, and it might. So there is some, some uh, traction to that argument. But there's not much traction in the argument that, people from Chester Gap and Amosville are going to be walking around in Sperryville. There's just no point in it. Sperryfest? So, I don't know anybody who went to Sperryfest. I did. I no, Chuck said he did. You did? That's two there. people. You Three people. Yeah. But okay. I, you were there. Yeah, he was there. But you don't live in Amosville. No, I don't. And I don't think anybody from Chester Gap went. Maybe they did. <laughs> so, the, I mean, there's... There's reasoning behind it, and uh, you know, also if the people feel that they have to pay for it, even though it might take 10 or 20 years, they might be a little less uh, excited to ask for things. There's, there's always that. It's, an, it's, it's a disincentive to want government involved in your front yard. Thank you. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the budget tonight. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I thought you were going to make a motion to create a special tax system. <laughs> motion, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone.